I'm at the beggar for stopping my partner's parents even seeing our baby. My parent is 8 months pregnant and I haven't talked, I have persuaded her to agree that her family will have nothing to do with our baby, Eva. Back at the start of the pregnancy, which was a complete accident, my partner was taking the contraceptive pill. We did not think that we could keep the pregnancy and needed an abortion. We both love each other and have been together 12 years, but we weren't planning on having a baby for another 5-6 years as we are saving for a house. When we found out we were pregnant, her parents came to see us, who we have always had a very poor relationship with as her mom is a shaming, controlling, manipulative individual, so keeping her at a distance is the best way. And for the first time, even she genuinely seemed to care. She listened to everything we said, tried to give us some advice, pampered my partner and looked after her. And together we all agreed the only thing missing in our family puzzle is the security owning a house, but suddenly, for me and my partner, it was too big a piece of the puzzle and we were going to get an abortion and wait a few years before trying for a baby. The next morning, my partner and mother says, I've coming up with a plan, I'm going to move some finances around and sell some things off and I'm going to give you enough for deposit and also all your childcare because I want to help you both and you deserve a family. We were ecstatic. It fixed everything for us and mean we could have our family now and gives the baby the life we want. We were fools. Eight months later, we now know the entire thing was a lie to get us give her a grandchild. Because after numerous lies, numerous weak months of no contact, now she's manipulating my partners or the family members against us, saying she never promised us any of this. We now know that there never was any money, she just lied, so we wouldn't get an abortion and she could be a grandmother. Having Solka persuaded my partner to completely and utterly stop them from ever seeing our baby. As I have been brought into the world on a complete lie, her mom won't ever got to be a grandparent. Is this fair or am I the bad guy? Emma the Bege for making my life easier and accessible. So a long time ago, while doing jiu-jitsu, I broke my wrist. I went and got a split on it. Two days later, I got my first cast. After getting that cast off, I was told my wrist don't heal right. So they re-broke it. Yeah, it hurts a lot. In the office and put another cast on it. After that cast, I was told it also didn't heal right. And I needed surgery. After my surgery, I had to have another cast put in. Since my right hand was now in the cast for nearly half a year non-stop, I lost a lot of muscle in my hand and wrist. It was impossible for me to do certain stuff. Even just trying to turn a door knob was painful. Eventually, it got stronger and I began to be able to do more things. But even now, I cannot open some drinks, containers or something, but in shifts, chains gave me trouble. But for the most part, I've got it down. Now, while I was still going through all the cast, I was so embarrassed and annoyed that I could not tie my shoes. I ended up wearing crocs or sleep on shoes a lot of the time, but my favorite shoes were white ones with shoelaces. I had bats on the laces and they were my favorite. I wore them everywhere, but I saw in love that there were white velcro one and I ordered them. Eventually, I relearned how to tie my shoes and forgot about the velcro shoes. Until a little ago, I was going through my closet and found them. I was on the phone with my friend at the time and explained my story about them. I looked at my other ones and realized how ready they were. They had holes in the soles and in the fabric. They were also practically brown even after washing them. So I said to my friend that I might start wearing them more. Her reaction was shocking. She called me a beast and a bad guy because someone with actual accessibility problems could need those, not me. It isn't the first time she reacted like this. She also reacted this way when I broke a large size in shirt because I feel more comfortable in baggy tops. This was a while ago, but since I've been wearing the vans for a little while, it had me thinking like, LOL, am I the bad guy?
I'm not the bad guy for letting my roommate's food burn in the oven. One of my biggest pet peeves is people invading in on what I'm doing. For example, if I'm in the kitchen doing something and step out for a few moments, I hate if I came back and someone has cleaned up after me, unless obviously something was in the way or they needed to use something. But I hate when people don't just mind their businesses and leave stuff how it was. I hate it when I leave at home and my mom will tidy up my room when I wasn't around. Nothing crazy, but say I left a shirt hanging on my bed frame. I know exactly where that shirt is. Now I'm coming back looking for it and it's in the new spot. And I ask my mom, she doesn't remember where she put it and etc etc. I just... I'm a big believer in minding my own business. I strongly dislike if I'm making something in the oven and have a timer set and it goes off and someone takes it out right away and turns the oven off. Usually, I want to leave it on a bit longer or maybe that was just the first step and it needed to be checked on, even if that was the time for it to be taken out. I would much rather people just mind their own things. So I extend this courtesy to the others and it's very much in my nature to mind my own business. Usually, what other people are doing isn't on my radar and people point out how I'm usually in my own world a lot. My roommate, on the other hand, is the complete opposite. She has to be part of everything. If I'm watching something, she asks what I'm watching. If I look at my phone and laugh, she asks what I'm laughing at. It's not a problem. A lot of my friends are like this and I don't find it annoying. She's like this with everyone. But she grew up in a big household. I was only child, so she has some different tendencies. She can be absent-minded and easily distracted. She's almost expect people around her to be watching out for her. She will have water boiling on the stove and wander to another room. Also, she has the annoying to me tendency to clean up after me or other people that are in the apartment. She was baking cookies in the oven and I was in the kitchen eating a bowl of cereal. I was also wearing airpods. She left the kitchen for a while and eventually I heard the oven going off faintly through the airpods, but it wasn't my business. Eventually, she came up rushing into the room and took the cookies out. They weren't burned to the point where they smelled, but her chewy cookies were solid. She told me I shall have her the oven and took them out. I told her if that was she wanted, she should have told me to listen for the oven and I will take them out and that you can just assume someone's will. She said it was rude. What do you think? Am I the bad guy for exposing my best friend's cheating and becoming the worst best friend ever? My best friend recently confided in me that she's been cheating on her long-term boyfriend for the past two months. Initially, I advised my friend to end the relationship, but she hesitated. Citing her family's approval and her desire to keep their newfound pride in her. Feeling conflicted, I expressed my guilt to her. As her boyfriend is also my friend and I was the one who introduced them. A few weeks later, her boyfriend approached me for help in choosing an engagement ring and I panicked. I immediately called my best friend, arguing her to come clean before he proposed. She agreed to end things with the person she was seeing and asked him for my assistance in supporting her boyfriend. While at the jewelry shop, I forgot that I left my phone in the car. When her boyfriend went to retrieve it, he stumbled upon incriminating text messages my best friend had sent to me about her fleeing. Shocked by their context, which hinted at the further betrayal, I couldn't keep the truth from him any longer. Her boyfriend was understandably furious and promptly left. My best friend later called me and ranged and labeling me as the worst friend ever. She blamed me for shattering their relationship, causing immense pain to everyone involved and deemed me a horrible person. I reflecting on the situation, I'm torn. Should I have kept my best friend's secret to prevent this painful fallout? Or was it my responsibility to expose her cheating, especially with her boyfriend considering marriage? 
I'm filled with remorse and questioning whether my actions were justified. While I never intended to destroy their relationship or hurt anyone, understand the profound impact my words had. And also, about how he read the messages and why I didn't tell him earlier. So I needed to show the jeweler a reference for ring I thought my friend would like. I realized I didn't have my phone with me, and my friend offered to grab it from my car while I check out other rings. I'm not exactly sure how he saw the message. My phone automatically opens when it gets picked up. Unfortunately, he came across the WhatsApp message that said, Back to vanilla s again, sad emojis. That's when he confirmed me and I had to explain about the offer. Now I know some people think I planned this whole thing, but I promise you it was just a crazy coincidence. I never intended for it to happen like this. As for why I didn't sell him earlier, it's because my best friend and I have known each other for 12 years. We've been through thick and thin, and she's always been there for me without judgment. I thought I owned her the same loyalty. I realize now that I made a mistake. I should have told him the moment he mentioned the engagement. I have apologized to him, but I haven't received a response yet. But what do you think? I'm at the baggy for wearing noise cancelling headphones when our baby is crying. So I'm pretty certain I'm the bad guy. Family agree I'm in the wrong, but our friend is saying I'm not. Also, even if I'm not the bad guy, my wife isn't either. She's an incredible mom, amazing wife, and the love of my life. Me and my wife have a little baby, who for the most part is a chill and happy little thing who makes our world shine. But as with any baby, she cries and sometimes a lot. I'm diagnostic autistic and as a result have some pretty severe sensory issues, particularly around sound, and particularly when I'm tired. I have noise cancelling headphones, which are a godsend, so I started wearing them when I found her crying too overwhelming, particularly when I get up at night with her. To clarify, I can still hear her crying, and I don't put them on so I can ignore her crying. Quite the opposite. I wear them so I can hold her without feeling overwhelmed. Also, it's just her being a baby, not a medical thing. Most of the time, she is a joy. I love our 2M feeds when it feels like nobody else in the world is awake except us. Enjoying the stillness and the solitude. I love her so much. My wife hates it and has asked me to stop. She said that being a parent involves having to cope with the bad stuff. It's what we sign up for, and that it's important not to block our her crying, so I can feel what our daughter is feeling. She also said that it probably scares our daughter to see her dad with stuff on his head when she is at her most distressed. When she said it makes a lot of sense, so I stopped wearing them and handled the resulting meltdowns afterwards. But when I was talking to a friend, he said that's unreasonable demand. I'm not a bad dad and my needs with my disability matters too. So I'm not the bad guy for wearing noise cancelling headphones when my daughter is crying to manage sensory issues. I'm not the bad guy for not letting my mother-in-law see her second grandchild for a week after we get home from the hospital after she crushed the birth of my first daughter. Hello, back love, this is a wild ride. For context. I am 35 weeks pregnant with my second child. I struggle with standing up for myself in situation where I know I should. This will be important later. My mother-in-law has caused a tremendous amount of trauma for me in the past year. After my first daughter birth, when I was in labor and we had been admitted into the hospital, I had already been in labor for 38 hours. My fiancé had called his mom to let her know we had been admitted and our daughter will be born soon. According to him, she had offered to drop food off for himself, my mom and the nurses, who were working the night shift. I thought this was a kind gesture, as I had planned on bringing gift baskets for the nurses, but did not get to complete them due to our daughter's early arrival. 
However, when she showed up, she requested to know where I was located. The nurse's station gave her my room number and let her go in, empty-handed. I had clear boundaries that I only wanted my mom and my fiancé with me while I was delivering. Upon her arrival, I had just gotten an epidural and was finally starting to feel better. She walked in and everyone's face dropped. I sat there with my mouth open in fear of why she was there. My fiancé asked what she was doing there and she started she came to figure out what everyone wanted to eat. I had fallen asleep as I was not planning on eating any food when the nurse came and checked to see how delayed I was. She asked me if I was ready to start pushing. I looked into the left of the bed and noticed his mom was still there passed out on the couch leaving my fiancé and my mom sitting on a felted chairs. Everything went so fast after this. Doctor came in and we started to push. I look over and I see her waking up. She grabbed her phone and promptly started to get up. Next push comes and she is taking pictures. Ask her please, no pictures or video, I don't want this to be recorded. She said okay and that she would not record. I brush it off as I had no time to start arguments. I looked to my fiancé and asked did you say she could stay? The doctor yelled and said she was about to come out. Amongst the commotion, my daughter's was burned and she was all I could see. As the shock began to sink in and the nurses were talking her to make sure she was breathing, I noticed her taking pictures of my just born naked daughter. I was furious, I began saying stop, however no one hear me due to the commotion and the nurses busy trying to get her to breathe. I come to later find out she had recorded the entire birth taking pictures of my daughter and send them to her family, who I never met. Long story short, it took over five months to get her to delete the video from her phone and transfer it to a thumb drive so it was the only person with a copy. During those five months, jokes were made that they had uploaded the video to coincide to make money and that I've never wanted the video while I'm asking for it. This was severely traumatized me as a new mom. I have brought it up to her and let her know that it offended me, that she thought she could say without asking, and that she ignored my one and only request. She said that if I had just said something, she would never have been there. I beat myself up every day about the fact that I did not stand up for myself. The fact that nurses ignored my requests and my fiancé ignored my requests. Fast forward to today, I'm making my birth plans and making damn well sure she's not in the delivery room. I brought up that I don't think she shall see our second daughter for a while after birth. As I don't need trauma or stress, as I'm considering high risk this time around. I've been so I'm overreacting. And that has been over a year and I shall just let it go. I can't seem to let it go. It truly bothers me to lack of respect she had for me. So, am I the bad guy if I don't allow her to see her second granddaughter? Am I the bad guy for telling my housemate that people are sick of hearing her travel stories? I live with three other people in the house. Let's call them Mark, Jeb, and Sam. We all met at work. Our main circle of friends is people we have met through our cohort. Mark and I play soccer in a rec league and I have made some other friends that way. Jeff is involved with his church program so has made friends that way, while Sam's hobbies are more solitary, reading, watching TV and puzzles and so on. Her introverted nature has caused us to have a few issues before. I will have plans with one of our mutual friends and go to leave. She will be in our living room watching TV and ask where I'm going, then ask if I show tag alone. I will either say yes and not get to have the one-on-one -on -one time with a friend that I wanted, or tell her actually I was really hoping to get some one-on-one -on -one time with them, and she had understand but be upset. Part of the issue is that instead of inviting others to do something, 
she waits to be invited to things, then gets upset when invitations don't come. But another factor is that she can rub people the wrong way, the main reason being that she seemingly can go 10 minutes without concerning in conversation to the fact that she studied abroad in France for a semester, then for three weeks in the summer. You mention flowers, she talks about in Lyon, they uh, talk about movies and the, the theaters in France. It always comes off very, I'd rather be in France, where life is better and people were classier. And yeah, most of our social circle has studied abroad, like at some point, and it has stories like that. A few of our friends have mentioned to me that they are sick of hearing her talk about how much better France is than here. It all came to a head last Sunday, when Mark and I were playing soccer. Jeff was at brunch with his church friends, and Sam woke up to find herself alone. She asked me to go on and went later that day, and told me she felt alone and abandoned in the morning. We were all gone, and she didn't know where we were, and thought we were all hanging out with mutual friends without her, that her college roommate will do the same thing, hang out with mutual friends and notify her or tell her, and how she couldn't go through that again. I felt a bit like she was acting upset with me for daring to hang out on my own with people outside my household. So I told her, well, maybe if you made plans yourself instead of just asking to tag Lona to us, you wouldn't feel so much like this. And maybe if you could go a single hour without talking about how great your program in France was, more people would ask you to hang out with them. She climbed up after I say that. So I assure her that we all still like her as a housemaid and like hanging out with her, but that sometimes we got other stuff going on which is normal. She spent most of the week in her room and isn't talking to me. I feel bad that she's upset, but I don't think I said anything out of order. So guys, am I the bad guy here? <laughs>